In this video, we will discuss the problem farthest number. So we are given with an array of size n. For each element in the array, our task is to find index of the farthest element in the array to the right, which is smaller than the current element. Basically, we have to find the a smaller element from the element at the particular index, which is farthest from the element and which is at the right. For example, this is the element 3. Okay, this is the element 3 here and 1 and 2 both are smaller than 3 but because 2 is farthest from 3 so we have to output the index of 2 and index of 2 is 3 in this case you can see. So now let's see how can we do this. So this is the array given to us. So now let's see how can we do this. So first is the brute force approach. For example, we are at this particular index i. So we have to search for a element uh, which is less than this 3 and which is farthest to the right side. So what we can do, we can simply iterate to the right of this particular i and then check for the smallest element and then output the index which is farthest from that. That is the brute force approach. But it will take order of n square time where n is the where n is the size of the array. It will take this much of time. So now, uh, now let's see how can we do this. We have to find for a more efficient solution to solve this particular problem. Fine. So now let's see how can we do this. So we have to find the number which is just smaller and is present right side of that index. So we can make use of suffix array. What is the suffix array? Suffix array basically determines the value of each segment from right side. Means if I take a suffix array, so it will be of same size. So because this array is of size 5, so I will take suffix array. For example, this is the suffix array which has 5 elements. So its first elements will, will basically deal with the index n minus 1 to n minus 1. Means basically for this particular index. This will deal with n minus 2 to the last index. This will deal with n minus 3 to the last index. And this will deal with 0 to the last index which is n minus 1. This is the work of suffix array. But what we have to store? Maybe sometimes we use suffix array to store sum of elements. Like yeah, for, for this particular subarray, sum of element is 4. For this particular subarray, sum of element is 6. For this particular subarray, sum of element is 11. But in this case, we don't have to find a sum of element. In this case, what we have to do is, we have to find the minimum number, smallest number. So what we will do? We will save the minimum number among this particular subarray. So till this particular subarray, minimum is 4. Till here, minimum is 2. Till here, again minimum is 2. Till here, minimum is 1. Until the last one, minimum is 1. So this is our suffix array. It contains minimum up to a particular index from right side. That is why it is a suffix array. It is not prefix. It is a suffix array. Okay. Now, the next thing. One more thing is that this suffix array will always be in sorted order, in increasing order. It will never be in decreasing order or in any other order. It will always be in increasing order. So now let's see how can, how can what we will implement now to this particular suffix array. What we can do is, for example, we are at particular index i. So now we have to find a element which is right means among this subarray and has value small this particular. Array. So what we will do, we will use this uh, this particular suffix array and we will apply binary search to this array because this is a solid array. So we can apply binary search to this particular subarray and then find that is there any element present which is less than to our given index or not. We will implement this particular. So if I try 
if I implement to apply a logic to the first index, for example. This is the suffix array given to us. Let's remove all the other thing which is not required. Okay. So, for example, we will discuss for the first index, which is 3 in this case. So, for this 3, or we have to take all the right elements, means this particular subarray. So, we will iterate. Okay. So, we will use two pointers. Obviously, in binary search, we use two pointers. So, this is the first point, let's say L. This is the second pointer, let's say R. Okay. And then we, we have to take the mid element. So, mid element in this case is, for example, 2. This is the mid element. So, yeah, this mid element is less than R given. So, we can store the index of this element. So, this index of this element is 2. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But we have to find the farthest element, which is smaller. So, if we have found a minimum element, we will now we, we will point this L to here. Then we will point to this particular. Again, this is less than 3. So, we will take our index as 3. Then we will go more further, but this is greater than 3. So, we will not take that. And then we will break the loop. Okay, this is what we will do. We will apply binary search. Okay, this is how we can do. Let's take one more example. Okay, let's take one more example. How can we implement this particular solution? So let's take some random array. Okay, some random array. So for example, the array given to us is 2, 5, 9, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. This is the array. First of all, we find the suffix array of this corresponding this array. The suffix array will be 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. This is the corresponding suffix array because till here minimum element is 3, till here minimum element is 2, till here minimum element is 1. Similarly, till here the minimum element will be 1 only. Okay, so fine. Now let's see how can we do that. Okay. So now, for example, we have to find for this or uh, uh, yeah, for this particular index. So we will take this particular subarray. So we will apply binary search to this array. This will be our two pointers. This will be our mid pointer. You can see our mid pointer is pointed to element which is smaller than this five. So we will store the index of this element, which is four in this case. And then we will consider the element after that. Okay, we will consider the element which is after that. Okay, here. Now we will consider L is here, R is pointing towards here, so M will point towards mid. Again, this 2 is also less than this 5. So we will store, so now our new index will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Our new index is 6. Now L and R both will point towards this 3. So M will also point towards this 3. Okay, so similarly, now we will check yeah 3 is also less than 3 is also less than uh, this 5 so we will store the index of the 3 which is 7 in this case so the answer will be 7 because the least element the smallest element for this 5 is 3 here which is small which is farthest from this 5 for this 2 the smallest element will be 1 and it is here this is how we will do we will implement okay so now let's try to implement our solution. How can we implement? Okay. Uh, so now let's move towards the code part. Okay. So first of all, what we will do, we will create a suffix array. Okay. So we will create a suffix array as we have discussed in our example that a suffix array is required. And similarly, our answer array is also required where we will answer our output where we will return the. So we will initialize two different vectors first is answer and initially all the values of this vector will be minus one and uh, another vector which will be arr it will be it will be also of size n okay yeah now now what we will do is we will uh, we will take some other example so we will first find the suffix array okay so for the suffix array, what we will take, the suffix array will be the minimum basically. We will store the minimum element up to that index. So 
this is arr we will rename it with suffix call the suffix array fine so the last index of this suffix array with with itself the last index of our array. okay yeah now for so we will iterate from left okay we will iterate from left so the value of suffix i will be minimum of suffix i plus 1 comma arr so this is how we will find our suffix array okay now now we have to iterate for each and every element so again one more thing the answer for the last index will always be minus 1 because for the last index there will be no there will be no element present at the, at the right this is what i am telling if this is our array then for this last index there is no element in its right so answer will always be minus 1 in this case also answer is minus 1 because there is no element present which is smaller than in its right similarly the answer for the last index will always be minus 1 and we have already initialized all the index with minus 1 so we don't have to change anything so we have to check from the index number n minus 2 till 0 okay so now we will apply binary search here so we will take two two pointers and we will point towards uh, so here it will be i is equal to yeah and we will point towards i plus 1 because we have to take the sub array just right of that particular index and r will point towards the last index so now we will apply the same binary search here with a while loop then we will find the mid of this lnr okay so now the three conditions that if the value at this particular m for suffix not for arr because we have to apply binary search on suffix array this value is less than our current value which is i so in that case what we will do we will make our answer is equal to m means yeah at index m r uh, the value is less than this i okay then then what we will do we will move l to m plus 1 else if the value is not less it is equal or greater than then we will simply update the value of r m minus 1 this is how we will store and then if when we will iterate for all the values of i we will simply return the this is what we have discussed in our code the same implementation is here okay yeah so we have first calculated the suffix array then we have checked for each and every index we have applied binary search to our suffix array this is how we work fine so now let's compile our code and run the sample output you can see the sample is correct so now let's submit it so all the 31000 test cases are passed now let's move towards discussing the time complexity and space complexity of our suffix so as we have taken a suffix array a answer array of size n so our space complexity will be o of n our space complexity will be O of n. If I talk about the time complex, so obviously we have iterated for all the indices from 0 to n. And also for each index i, we have implemented binary search in the suffix array. So this binary search take O of log n time. So the final time complexity will be O of n log n. This is our time complexity of our solution. So space complexity is O of n and time complexity is O of n log. So I hope you understand the video. If you have liked the video, please like the video, comment if you have any query or if this video is helpful for you. Share this video with your friends in your college and also subscribe to Geeks for Geeks Practice.